Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. December 28th, Michael Faraday. Growing up in a poor family, Faraday received very little formal education. But at the age of 14, a local bookbinder took Faraday on as an apprentice for seven years. During that time, he read extensively and covered a wide range of scientific literature. When he was 21, Faraday attended four lectures by world renowned chemist Humphrey Davy at the Royal Institution, at which point Faraday wrote a letter to Davy asking to be his assistant. Davy initially turned him down, but within a year, he had appointed Faraday as a chemical assistant at the Royal Institution. Thirteen years later, Faraday founded the Royal Institution's Friday Evening Discourses and the Christmas Lectures, the UK's flagship science series, which is now broadcast on national television every year. Faraday persisted as a pioneer in the field of science. He made several important discoveries that changed how we understand electricity and magnetism. He became professor of chemistry at the Royal Military Academy and a scientific advisor to Trinity House, a charity that provides for the maritime community and the official authority for lighthouses and other navigational resources. On this date, in 1841, Faraday delivered his famous Christmas lecture, The Chemical History of a Candle. And that's where today's story begins. Honor God who created you by doing your duty with honor. Michael Faraday warmly began his Christmas lecture. And now, boys and girls, I must first tell you of what candles are made. His smile immediately captured the evening's crowd of several hundred people who had gathered in the familiar lecture theater. The people watched as he described the qualities of various types of candles, which had been gifted to him for the lecture. He delightfully detailed how each type of candle had been created and which types would burn with greatest efficacy. Observing two cosmetically beautiful candles designed to cast shadows as they burned, as a glowing sun above the bouquet of flowers beneath, Faraday said, All, however, that is fine and beautiful is not useful. These fluted candles, pretty as they are, are bad candles. They are bad because of their external shape. Faraday then pulled an old cracked candle from his collection and raised it in one hand for the room to see. He said the candle had been salvaged from a deep shipwreck after more than 50 years in unfavorable conditions. I have here a candle that has been taken out of the Royal George. It is said by Colonel Charles Paisley. It has been sunk in the sea for many years subject to the action of salt water. It shows you how well candles may be preserved, for though it is cracked about and broken a great deal, yet when lighted, it goes on burning regularly, and the tallow resumes its natural condition as soon as it is fused. Faraday then lit the wick of the shipwrecked candle and revealed a strong golden flame. There is not a law under which any part of this universe is governed which does not come into play and is touched upon in these phenomena. There is no better, there is no more open door by which you can enter into the study of natural philosophy than by considering the physical phenomena of a candle. The crowd watched in fascination. As he lit several types of candles, Faraday made his way through the outline of his lecture and experiments, pointing out scientific observations as he went from how old candles burn without immediately being consumed to how candles can remain a solid and liquid simultaneously. He noted that light, heat, and flame occur without effort at first glance. Then he identified the vast array of chemical and physical interactions that actually made these simple aspects of a candle possible. A miraculous, complex harmony of natural laws at work natural laws which Faraday's faith caused him to attribute to the reliability of God's laws. You would hardly think all these substances which fly about London in the form of soots and blacks, 
are the very beauty and life of the flame, Faraday said. Members of the audience nodded silently in agreement. Faraday masterfully blended his observations of natural law with his principled faith in God and closed this historic Christmas lecture with a compelling moral challenge. Indeed, all I can say to you at the end of these lectures is to express a wish that you may, in your generation, be fit to compare to a candle, that in all your actions you may justify the beauty of the taper by making your deeds honorable and effectual in the discharge of your duty to your fellow men. Jesus actually said something similar in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. How can you better use your influence at work to bring glory to God? Honor God who created you by doing your duty with honor. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.